Hello everyone, my name is Joe Barnard. In the United States, there are two major rocketry organizations, the National Association of Rocketry and Tripoli. Both of these organizations recognize a sort of three-tiered approach to high-power rocketry. These tiers are level one, level two, and predictably, level three. Level one is the smaller end of high-power rocketry, which is a bit of an oxymoron, but this lets you fly H and I impulse motors. Level two gets you up to J, K, and L impulse motors and level three is M, N, and O impulse motors, which, if you're not familiar with rocketry, they contain a considerable amount of propellant. All these rockets are considered to exist in HPR, or high-powered rocketry. Of course, there is LPR, or low-powered rocketry, and that's what the majority of my builds with thrust vector control are. Those are smaller rockets with less mass, less propellant, all that good stuff. I would love to give you all the different specs on the differences between levels one, two, and three in terms of hard numbers and where the lines are drawn, but my script writing intern hasn't figured out how to stop typing exclusively in emojis. If you're looking for those details, they're linked in the description down below. But today we're here to talk about Thrusty McThrustface. This is my level one and level two rocket that I built. I built Thrusty McThrustface on a live stream back in 2017 when I used to stream on Twitch. Woo! Man, that's a good looking rocket. The vehicle didn't have a name at that point, so I tossed a link to a straw poll in the chat, and I said, hey, internet, you can name this. They came up with Thrusty McThrustface as the front runner with the slogan of, in thrust, we trust. That's the real name. I let the internet name it. Don't let the internet name things. A couple quick specs on the rocket. The vehicle is 2.8 kilograms loaded. It's about two meters in length. It's a 98 millimeter diameter tube with a 38 millimeter motor housing and three fins. You don't need to fly it with any electronics. There's no thrust vector control, nothing fancy. It's pretty much three fins and a nose cone. To get my level one certification, I flew it on a Cesaroni I-175 motor up to 700 meters. That's gorgeous. That was all the way back in 2017, and since then, it's just been sat in the corner of whatever room I work out of. That was until a couple weeks ago when my buddy Parker texted me and said, hey man, I'm gonna go get my level two certification. Do you want to? And I was like, yeah. So I designed and printed a couple camera mounts for a Runcam 2 camera to fit on the side of the airframe. I added a new parachute, I gave it a new paint job, I added a little bit of weight and a new motor, and we were ready to hit that big red yeet button. It's, it does not say yeet on it. Yeah, but right before we look at the footage, I have to flex just a little bit. So you have to take an exam as part of your level two certification. You have to prove that you know a little bit more than something like a level one. So Parker and I both took our exams and we both got 100% nothing wrong. Okay, the flex is over, let's watch the footage.
the chute release worked pretty well. I bet we could find out our max altitude here. Here we go, flight four, 739 meters. The fins, one, two, three, all in good shape. This one, it looks like it hit the ground first, but this seems to mostly be flyable again. That guy is, uh, he's a roasty toasty. It was a bit windy on the day, which is why we pitched the rocket so hard over into the wind and toward the center of the field. We also launched on the edge of the field and we really weren't interested in creating any tree ornaments. Speaking of recovery, check out that parachute on the way down. That's a rotosail that was designed by BJ of Bama Recovery Systems, which is linked down below. He generously donated this custom rotosail chute to me over a year ago, so BJ, I'm so sorry it took so long for me to fly this. Like I mentioned though, it's a rotosail, which means it's not one piece of cloth, it's all of these sections, I believe 24 in total, that rotate around a point on a small bearing. The air goes through and slips between these little foils here, which makes the whole parachute spin around in this really pretty fashion. So that's it for Thrusty McThrustface. I had a successful certification test and a successful cert flight. So I sent the test and a few other materials off to the National Association of Rocketry headquarters just about a week ago, and I should be getting back an L2 card in the mail soon. That is, however, not the end of the video because Parker also flew his rocket, the BBR. His rocket was pretty similar to mine. It had a mass of about three kilograms, a diameter of about 98 millimeters, a 38 millimeter motor mount with a J270 motor inserted. Apogee for Parker's rocket was about 750 meters as well, so just a little bit higher than mine. As I mentioned, the rocket is called the BBR, which does not actually stand for the Barnard Bathroom Review. I've been told not to tell you what the BBR stands for, so leave your best guess in the comments down below. All right, now here's the actual launch footage. That's all anyone shows up for anyway. Parker's rocket was launched at a hard angle as well in order to keep it out of the trees. He did have a landing just a bit further away though. Parker and Kyle were able to successfully walk all the way to the end of the field to grab the rocket and I was successfully able to not do any of the hard work or walking and just fly the drone instead. Okay, now here's the deal. The channel recently passed 100,000 subscribers, which is, first of all, incredible. Thank you very much. Second of all, I think it's a law that after 100,000 subscribers, you're legally required to become a real YouTuber. And you can't be a real YouTuber without merch. So you don't have to buy this, but I got a little carried away. I designed Thrusty McThrustface socks. If you want any, they say, in thrust, we trust on them. I'm gonna be buying several pairs. They're linked in the description. They help support the project. You don't have to. I just, I had too much fun with that. Thanks as well to the patrons who help support this project on Patreon. They help a lot in plenty of ways, but certainly offsetting the cost of very expensive high power rocket motors is one of those ways. So thanks to those folks. Thanks to you for watching. My name is Joe Barnard. May your skies be blue and your winds be low.